Shalom, and welcome to Light of the Hill Ministries, and in today's teaching, we will be continuing on our study of Genesis. If you want to follow along, I will be posting this in the comment box below. And now, unto the teaching. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that Elohim created man, he created him in the likeness of Elohim. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them. And he called their name Adam in the day that they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and brought forth a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Sheth. Genesis 5 verses 1 through 3. This chapter begins with the declaration of this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. What obviously follows is the lengthy genealogy of the, of the descendants of Adam through his son, Sheth. Normally, when we reach this, these lengthy lists of unfamiliar names, we begin to skim through the text, looking for something we can pronounce. And often we butcher the pronunciation. I know I do. This chapter is more than just a, a mere transition between the story of creation and the story of the flood. There is a great deal of significant information given in this list, its pattern and its exceptions. While genealogies often served as literary bridges between the larger sections of the history, this does not mean that they are without merit. Let us take a careful look at at this genealogy, which spans between the fall of Cain to Noah and the flood. There are significant lessons to be learned from the study of this genealogy. First, we should take careful note that this genealogy does not begin with Adam, but with Yahweh himself. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. Now the day that Elohim created man, he made him in the likeness of Elohim. Genesis 5, verse 1. As we can see, Yahweh is actually the first in line of men. And that man was to be in his image, but not in the image in the sense of appearance, but in the manner in which Adam exercised dominion over the animal realm. And Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said to them, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over all creepy creatures on the earth. Genesis 1, verse 28. Adam was created to live in a particular created order. Yahweh could communicate with the spirit of Adam, which would then inform Adam's soul how to think about, feel about, and see the world around him. Adam's soul would then inform his flesh on how to interact with the creation around him. In this proper order, Adam's flesh was submitted to his soul, and his soul was submitted to his spirit, and his spirit was submitted to the very word of Yahweh. And because Adam submitted to the very word of Yahweh, he manifested the image of Yahweh to the world around him. And as we said previous, in previous teachings, Adam was to have dominion over that animal realm, which included his own animal nature. We may recall that the animals were brought to Adam, that he gave names to all of them. By giving names to the animals, Adam demonstrated his dominion over them. What we should know what we should also note in this chapter is that it was Yahweh who gave Adam his name. Male and female he created them, and he blessed them, and he called their name Adam in the day that they were created. Genesis five verse two. By giving them a name, Yahweh was exercising his dominion over man. Clearly, man was to be in submission to Yahweh. This submission 
to the exclusive will and word of Yahweh is described as eating from the tree of life. And the very words of Yahweh are living, and they are life. And he said to them, Set your heart on all the words with which I warn you today, so that you command your children to guard to do all the words of this Torah. For it is not a worthless word for you, because it is your life. And by this word you prolong your days on the soil which you pass over the yard to possess. Deuteronomy 32, verses 46 through 47. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh does not profit at all. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. John 6, verse 63. For the word of Elohim is living and working and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12. But we must remember that there is another tree, and that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree is a mixed fruit, mixed seed and mix words is forbidden to Adam. But do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 2 verse 12. This tree represents living by the mixture of Yahweh's word and man's fleshly word. Remember that the promise of the serpent was that by eating of this fruit, Man's eyes would be open, and that they would be like Elohim. For Elohim knows that, the, that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, verse 5. Adam had a choice to either live by the exclusive word of Yahweh, or live in the animal realm in his flesh. He chose the latter. Failing to exercise dominion over the animal nature, Adam fell into temptation, disobeyed Yahweh, and ate mixed seed. Now Adam's eyes were open, and he indeed became like Elohim, a mighty one. But Adam walked away from Yahweh's might and authority, and had become his own might and authority. So Adam began living in the mixture of of Yahweh's revelation and his animal nature. It was this mixture that brought for that brought about Adam's death, thus the death of the image of Yahweh. By adding to his own knowledge and revelation of Yahweh, Adam now manifested his own broken image of Yahweh. So we note at the beginning of the genealogy an interesting statement. Adam lived 130 years and brought forth a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Sheth. Genesis 5, verse 3. Adam should have borne the image of Yahweh and handed it down to his son Sheth. But because of that broken image, he gave a mixed image of his own. And because of the brokenness of man's image of Yahweh, the name of Yahweh has been profaned. The name of Adam is now associated with man and his flesh. The names of his ancestors tell us a story of events that will take place in the future. Now, it is important to understand that in Hebrew culture, names were chosen for a very specific purpose and had meaning. And the genealogy of, of Adam gives us an important message. That is the plan of salvation within it. Finding the meaning of proper names can at times be difficult. However, as you dig in and get to the roots, you can find such fascinating insights. Let us therefore take a closer look at each name and its meaning. Adam is the first name listed. It is Strong's 
number H120, that it means man, mankind, and makes sense since he was the first man. Next is Shep Strong's H8351, which means appointed, and he was the third named son of Adam. After Sheth was Enosh, Strong's H583 and means mortal man or miserable, and comes from the root word Anosh, Strong's H605, which means to be weak, sick, desperately sick. The term mortal gives the meaning of something incurable, destined for destruction and death. And after Enosh was Canaan, Strong's number H7018 means sorrow or possession, and gives the picture of one that possesses sorrow, or it can also mean a song of sorrow. How sad to be called sorrow, or a poem, or a song of sorrow. It may have referred to some circumstances at birth. After Canaan is Mahalalel, Strong's age 4111, whose name is a, comp a compilation of two parts. The first part of the name comes from the noun of for praise, which is Mahalal. Mahalalel. See, I butcher it too. Strong's age 4110 which comes from the primitive root verb halal. Strong's H 1984, meaning shine, praise, boast. The second part of the name is L, Strong's H 410, which, mean, which is generally accepted as the shortened form of Elohim, the genus of Elohim. So therefore, the name Mahalalel means the praise of Elohim, or the majesty of Elohim, or the blessed Elohim. After Mahalo is Yared, strong age 3382, which means descent, comes from the root word Yarad, strong age 3381, which means go down, descend, decline, pour out. Hence, we get from Yared the meaning to descend or shall come down. And after Yared is Hanok, strong age 2585, means dedicated, devoted to instructions. The derivative of this name means trained servant, and we can also get the translation teaching or commencement. Hanok was the first of the four generations of preachers. Now, the earliest recorded prophecy was by Hanok, which deals with the second coming of Messiah, although it is quoted by Yehuda, or as he is commonly called, Jude, Yahushua's half-brother. Jude 1, verses 14 through 15. And Hanok, the seventh from Adam, also prophesied of these, saying, See, Yahweh comes with his myriad of set-apart ones to execute judgment on all, to punish all who are wicked among, among them concerning all their wicked works, which they have committed in a wicked way, and concerning all the harsh words which wicked sinners have spoken against him. And after Hanok is Bethuselech, Strong's H. 49.68 means, His death shall bring. Methuselah became the oldest man, a picture of Yahweh's favor. And after Methuselah is Lamech. Strong's age 39.29 is a name that today we have derived the English word lament. and also means to be low or depressed, also means despairing, giving the picture of being without hope. After Lamech is Noah, Strong's age 5146 means comfort and rest. As Lamech, his father, explained in 
Genesis 5, verse 29. This one does comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which Yahweh has cursed. Genesis 5, verse 29. His name speaks of the rest that all those who trust in Yahweh will have in Messiah. Now that we have looked at, at these ten names, let us see what they are when we put them all together. Man is appointed sorrow. The blessed El, mighty one, shall come down teaching. His death shall bring rest. Right here is a prophetic picture of Yahweh's own son coming down to die for, our, for the sins of mankind. It is through him that we can find rest for our soul. We can now see how this chapter isn't boring at all if one digs through it and listens to the voice of the Father as to the plan of salvation through the names that he has chosen throughout time. He paid for man's sins and now brings hope and light to the lost and dying. May we accept Yahweh's plan of salvation through his son Yahushua, the Messiah, and accept his work on the stake, and know we are forgiven, and by, the pro and by the power of his resurrection, we receive new life and enter his comfort and rest. And as Yahushua declares, it has been accomplished. John 19, verse 30. Indeed, it is complete through Yahushua, and we can now be in submission to Yahweh through His Spirit, and He will give us a new name that no one will know. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assembly. To him who overcomes, I shall give some of the manna, hidden manna, to eat. And I shall give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Revelation 2, verse 17. It is at this time that we will truly bear the image of Yahweh wholly and correctly. It is here that we will show the world what Yahweh is like because our mirrors that were broken will, will be completely healed. Hallelujah. If you like this teaching, please comment, like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification button to be notified of the next teaching. Yahweh bless and shalom to your homes.